Hello everyone. In this video, we will discuss about the memory management. Um, a quick overview of all the concepts comes under memory management. So, memory management is nothing but if you uh, talk about memory management, so main memory is an important resource and that must be very carefully managed uh, in case of memory management. So nowadays we are actually uh, working with the average home computer and those computer will have 10,000 times more than the memory whatever we have used in earlier days for say for example IBM 7094 so like that of system whatever the memory they have used earlier 10,000 times more than the those systems which we are using now even for the uh, PCs that is personal computer. So here, uh, whatever the main memory, what we are using, so it could be uh, according to the programmer uh, uh, point of view. So it could be the private one and the very large memory and fast memory and it should be a non-volatile. So non-volatile which is nothing but the erase, uh, I mean the content of the memory will not be erased even when the power is switched off. And then obviously it should be more inexpensive. But uh, till now we didn't get uh, such kind of uh, main memory so which we are working with. But we are trying to get the inexpensive main memory. So uh, next one is we need to know about what is the concept of memory hierarchy. So in which the computers have a few uh, megabytes of the very fast which is nothing but cache memory. So in the memory hierarchy we will be having the cache memory. And uh, so that could be the highly uh, frequently used data will be stored in the cache memory. So it will be very fast because of low capacity of that particular memory. It is volatile because it is a temporary memory. And the next one it is uh, it contains only few megabytes of data though it is a very uh, smaller memory. And next hierarchy level so we can move on to the main memory so it consists of uh, a size of the data will be the few gigabytes and uh, so it should be a medium speed and um, medium priced uh, volatile main memory and uh, coming to the uh, next uh, next level of the memory hierarchy which is nothing but disk storage whatever we are using as a magnetic or uh, a solid state disk storage and all those uh, memory will be having the content of data then the size of the content will be as a few terabytes so the removable storage devices as we all know USB or the DVDs which we are not mentioned in the many memory hierarchy. So the main job of the operating system is to abstract this hierarchy into a useful model and uh, the part of the operating system so whatever it manages the memory hierarchy which is nothing but the memory manager. So its job that is the memory manager job must be uh, to efficiently manage the memory so it should keep a keep track of the memory whatever it is actually in use and it should allocate memory to the incoming processes and it should be allocated when the whenever they have completed so these are all the things we should note down when we talk about the memory hierarchy suppose in earlier days whatever the systems they have used they didn't uh, give the proper abstraction for the memory so it is that to be the no memory abstraction so in case of no memory abstraction which means we are capable of executing only the hardware related instruction like this. So if you get one such instruction as move register 1000 which means it will move so move instruction is nothing but it executes a move operation between one of the memory location and this register. So from this prescribed thousand uh, locations whatever the content we have so that could be moved to this register. So this is what the operation could be done by this instruction. So for this it needs only the physical memory so we don't know how to relate any of the other memory so we need only the physical address. So user can um, capable of um, accessing the physical memory itself. But while the user is accessing the physical memory, so it may lead to many uh, uh, problems such as, so it may uh, distract the uh, operating system, otherwise it may distract the other program, other users program, so which is highly complicated. So it should not be happen. So in order to avoid this, we are moving to some other memory references. Some of the memory references which are nothing but the relative address or uh, uh, the concept of dynamic loading, dynamic linking, relocation. Uh, 
so here when we talk about the memory management protection and relocation should be the major uh, uh, roles um, uh, uh, it plays a major role so uh, because uh, main memory has the smaller capacity which does not capable of um, Uh, holding the entire set of programs whatever we just entering into the system it holds only a small set of a process or the program and whenever the particular process has been given to cpu for execution so at that time the other process which are in not in use must be swapped out from the main memory and we can get the process which are ready to execute so that will be swapped into the main memory so this is what the concept of swapping so even if it does not hold the uh, to entire capacity to hold the uh, set of programs we can have the cap- we can uh, execute uh, any number of uh, programs but we need to follow all these swapping and relocation um, concepts so though it takes time and uh, but it will complete its entire operation within a time efficiently so that is what what are all the pros and cons which we are going to discuss about the relocation as well as swapping so here there are several ways to arrange or organize the memory so uh, there are uh, some three ways that are available which is uh, given here the first one is we have divided the memory into two section one uh, will will be for the operating system and other part is user program so in some cases operating system will be placed in the lower part of the ram and the remaining portion will be used for the holding the user program in other organization such as the os will be placed in the top of the memory so particularly in rom and the other part will be used in the uh, used to fast user program so another organization which is uh, uh, typically used in all the computer systems which is nothing but device drivers in rom and uh, the operating system will be placed at the bottom level of a ram and in between we will be having the user programs so this kind of model will be followed for mainframe and the mini mini computers the very first model will be followed for has been uh, followed in case of mainframe and mini computers and the second model has been followed for handheld and uh, embedded computers whereas third model what we are actually uh, using that is in our piece personal computer so we are actually following this third case so uh, usually in this third case uh, the portion of the system in the rom is said to be the bios which is nothing but the basic input output system so when the system is organized in this way so only one process at a time can be running so which means if the user types a command the operating system will receive that command and according to that he will i mean an operating system will perform its operation and finally it will give the result and afterwards it will wait for the next command that has been given by the next user or even by the same user but uh, how the multiple process can be done so how can the process can be executed parallelly so this may also achievable in case of these kinds of organization which is nothing but if you go with the multi threads concept so multiple threads uh, which are nothing but uh, is used for achieving this parallelism uh, in case of the third model of organization of memory so even uh, how we can uh, run uh, many number of a uh, process so without the threads concept so how we can run many number of um, programs without uh, a normal memory abstraction abstraction which is nothing but so we don't have any general idea about uh, 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 how the memory has been uh, allotted for each and every process in the system so without that knowledge so how can we execute multiple programs as well as in the main memory so if it is a s- holding for a single program then there will not be any conflicts occur uh, so we can easily execute all the program suppose if you are running multiple programs so we can go with either swapping concept which means i have already told that one part of the program or even the other program which ever not in use currently so that program can be swapped out and the programs that are ready for execution will be swapped into the main memory for execution this is what swapping so but it um, takes somewhat more time to do all this process so that uh, it delays the execution time uh, as well it will degrade the efficiency of the execution so that is the uh, disadvantage what we are facing if you go with swapping concept without swapping also we can perform the multiple programs running at the same time concurrently we can execute the multiple programs which means we will be dividing the memory into several um, 
a different size of blocks so and uh, so which is nothing but the dynamic partitioning and if you go with the equal size partition so that is also possible so uh, in case of equal size partition so we are getting the drawbacks as external fragmentation internal fragmentation so we are just moving to the dynamic partition there we are actually getting the external fragmentation but using the concept of compaction we can solve this kind of a problem so here how the memory has been divided into different uh, variable blocks and each and every blocks will be protected with some key value and uh, based on that key value the incoming program uh, will be compared with the corresponding key value so if it is both if both are equal then that particular process will be placed into the main memory so in this way we can protect we can um, protect the other programs from the currently executing programs or even we can protect the operating system very well so this is what one of the method without using the swapping we can use uh, the memory for multiple programs to be executed simultaneously uh, and uh, another one is relocation problem so why we are getting a relocation problem which means uh, if you are executing two set of a program simultaneously say for example we have process a and here we have process b so now you are going to execute process a and after the completion of process b you are going to execute process uh, process a after the completion uh, then we can execute process b suppose while executing this process a if it gets any interrupt so what happens there we should stop executing this process a and the next process which are ready to execute so that will be given for execution so what happens here uh, where we stopped it so that will be anyways we will store all those uh, information in the program control or the pcb so based on the val uh, information whatever we have storing so at, at which point we have stopped the executing this process and where it should be resumed so all those information will be maintained properly and afterwards while we are um, uh, searching for any other place to store any of the new process say for example process e c is actually going to execute it is ready for execution so we need to place in the memory if it does not uh, have any space to hold this process c what we have to do we have to go with the swapping technology so one of the process should should be swapped out so say for example if you swapped out the process a and process c has been swapped into the memory and after the execution of process C, so we are just going to swap out the process C and as well as if, if the process A is ready for execution, then we need to swap it in. So in that case, this was the original location where the process A has been stored previously. But after swap in, swap out, if we are storing this process A in some other lo re, uh, location, is said to be the relocation concept. So where we cannot execute that particular process because we will not, it is highly difficult to find out what could be the new address of this process A. But um, anyways, we will be executing the process sequentially. So it may get turned uh, in order to execute that particular process. So it may delays because we are not going to find out what is the process to be executed in actual location. So we are going to execute only sequentially. So that was the problem which we are getting in case of relocation. So that also to be avoided and how, how we can protect the other process or else the, even the operating system while the currently, while the process that were executed currently, which means using the concept of base and limit register, we can protect uh, even any other process or even the operating system itself. So base is the register which is used to hold the starting address. Whereas uh, limit is the register which is uh, used to, to denote the size of the program. So whichever the process you are going to place it here, say for example PB, that is the process B. So you are going to place it in main memory. So what could be its base address? That is the starting address. And limit is nothing but what is the size of this process? So what could be the size? So how many uh, uh, addressable bytes it is actually required to store it? So if it requires 20 or if it requires 30, something like that. So that was the value which is given for limit register. So using these two register values, we can protect even other programs. So we need to check whenever you are executing this program, we need to check whether it is um, it belongs to this particular block. 
with the help of these two register we can check it or we can compare it easily and we can uh, proceed to the further steps of execution so this is what how we are uh, achieving the protection and um, uh, how we are uh, avoiding the relocation problem and all okay so dynamic loading and dynamic uh, uh, linking or the two concepts which we need to follow whenever you are just doing the loading process during execution time so if you want to keep the process only during the execution time in main memory which means we can also do one part of the process has been stored already in the main memory the other part of the process will uh, it it should not have that much enough space to hold the entire process so in that case the process will be splitted into two one portion will be stored in main memory the other portion will still remains in the um, uh, secondary memory itself or which is nothing but disk so one of the portion that has been executed and during the execution time we will be switching over the process in between their corresponding sections so the other section of the program will be uh, kept, um, placed in the main memory that and that will be provided for execution that is what dynamic loading and dynamic linking means so wherever we need some library files has to be linked for process execution so there we are just linking all those libraries and that we are doing uh, uh, during the execution time that is what dynamic linking so these are all the concepts that we should know when we are uh, dealing with the memory management thank you